Hey guys, AJ here, back with another one. So, in continuation of Family Court Week, um, we're going to react to a video called Man Perfectly Explains Family Court. So, um, this is a really, really powerful video, a really sad story, so I'm going to try to not um, stop it too much. But, once again, I feel like vi videos like this are really good for people that have never been through Family Court. I've never been through Family Court, but like I was saying earlier this week, that I have friends of mine that have been through Family Court and friends of mine who haven't. And the information that my friends that have been through this um, have told me, I think that it was really good for my other friends that haven't been through this, that have the potential to go through this. And this is both male and female, mostly male, obviously, because the family court system screws over guys more than anything else. But there are women that I know that are going through this too, where either the new husband that they're with um, is getting screwed over by his ex-wife or, or um, you know, a mother whose son is going through this with his ex-wife or whatever. So um, there's a whole lot of reasons why people need to be kind of put people on game to what this family court system is about. So let's just get into this video. Uh, thank you. My name is Mark Ludwig. I do want to thank the members of the committee for taking the time to, to hear this issue, an extremely important one. Uh, without going into all the details out of respect for my son and his right to love his mom, uh, shortly after my son was born, I went 204 days without seeing my son. Uh, at the end of that time, I was relegated to the equivalent of an every, every other weekend visitor. Uh, shortly after that, uh, I was diagnosed with a pretty large growth in my brain. We didn't know what my future was going to be like. And it dawned on me that at that point, if something were to happen to me, my son's mom would automatically get sole custody. But it also dawned on me if the situation had been reversed, I would have automatically gotten sole custody of the very son that I was already only getting every other weekend. Why would it take the death of a parent to convert from an every other weekend visitor to being having full custody, full custody of, a of a child? And if you, I'll stop it here real fast. Just think about how crazy that is. He's wondering, like, why would it take one of the parents dying for the other parent to get sole custody? And, and I mean, just think about where he was in this whole thing. He's having all of this um, anxiety from his uh his medical condition and then he's also worrying about family court too it's absolutely insane let's get back into it if that's the case shouldn't both parents have 50 50. as a result of my story being uh televised on a, a news station in st louis my story went viral I, I it's i think it's been 30 million views or something like that and uh i, I've, I started doing a lot of facebook lives and uh, my reach now is around three to four million in an average month. This past year, I did a, a tour of 38 cities and 24 states. And this isn't about me at all. This is about a fact that obviously this issue resonates. If we're attracting three to four million people every single month that are paying attention to this. Three to four million people. That's crazy. I mean, uh, props to this guy because he obviously found an issue he was passionate about and he decided to put his voice out there. And that's kind of what... I'm trying to do with this channel about men's issues and issues that I feel are affecting men today. So if you hear, if you watch either any of my videos or if you watch this one and you watch this guy's story, I hope this inspires you, anyone out there to, you know, take a chance, you know, make a YouTube channel, make an Instagram and hell, go on Reddit or something and make your voice heard because you'll never, you never know who can hear your story or your views and and understand that there's pe people out there that think like them or that are going through what they're going through and maybe that can help them and you can help just one person and how rewarding is that just knowing that you just putting your voice out there can help people let's get back into it and as you look behind me at all the people that are affected this is resonating and it's the only issue in 30 years that i've been around the political arena that crosses gender lines crosses racial lines, crosses political lines, crosses socioeconomic lines. Exactly. Like he said, everyone always thinks, oh, only black men complain about child support. No, this is a, a black, white, Asian, Hispanic. This is an issue of all men, you know, of all uh, 
all types of social economic statuses and everything military firefighters police officers tech guys everything everyone's dealing with the same court and the reason why i had to stop it here is because if you look at the text that he highlighted it says the Social Security Act of 1975 contains Title IV D, a federal law that in part requires every state to manage a child support enforcement program. That's every state, all 50 states, and probably Puerto Rico. <laughs> to help fund these programs, the federal government provides money to each state. So that means that the government is paying states to have this family court system going. And from what I understand, it's not listed here, but the federal government matches all the states per every dollar that they collect in child support. So they are actually incentivized to actually have this family court going and actually make sure that families are broken up. It's a money game. And it's sad that a lot of women actually think that somehow they're winning or somehow they're getting over on their ex or whatever by putting them on child support. When all you're doing is just feeding this government program that's like a $60 billion industry. So it's not good for your kids because they're not getting all the money. The dad could possibly go to jail, and the only people who are making money, I even heard that the um, family court judges get a percentage of the other money that they collect. How crazy is that? So this judge who's sitting there staring at you as a guy is thinking, oh, man, I'm going to make some money off of you. So it's just a joke, and I hope anyone watching this understands like what harm this does to everyone involved. Let's get back into it. Except the lawyers and the judge, because they tend to make out pretty good. Let's get back into it. It affects everybody, because we already know half of all marriages end in divorce. And for children, they have two traumas that they're dealing with. Trauma one is mom and dad aren't together. They don't know why, but they're very confused because they love both of them. Now add into that confusion, only one of them do they get to see on a regular basis. That's true, but I'm stopping it here because, yep, sure enough, there it is. You can see in the highlighted text, it says, There's no incentive to grant the best parent custody, but to examine which parent can pay child support. This is important as every dollar of child support collected is matched by Title Four d funding. That means that that dollar amount is matched. The funding going to the states are not used to enforce visitation rights of the non-custodial parent, but going into areas of the state that are not accounted for. What a joke. Let's get back into it. The other one is relegated as a visitor, which makes one parent in their mind the superior parent and one parent's the inferior parent. Now imagine that to a seven-year-old child or a five-year-old child that doesn't know how to verbalize this confusion. And we wonder why when we look at the statistics, between 70 and 94% of violent crime rates, incarceration rates, um, high school dropouts, behavioral problems, substance abuse problems, can all be tracked to growing up, in many cases without the father, but this is technically like gender neutral. I'll fight just as hard for a mother as I will for a father. See, that's where he dropped the ball in this because statistics show that single father households do a lot better than single mother households. So I know that he's trying to be neutral, but single mother households are the result of a lot of these statistics. It is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. Let's get back into it. But the situation can be solved so easy by starting the case with a 50-50. In every other area of law, we start out with a due process that says people are innocent until proven guilty. And yet we walk into a courtroom and one parent is presumed to have the upper hand in most cases. Many of my followers and just about everybody in the, the room behind me will verify, most people I talk to say, you know what? I didn't have as much animosity for my ex. And look at that, they said that they don't get the money unless that the child support system doesn't get any federal money unless there's money collected in the state. So if they were to shut down all of the child support that they collect in the state, they wouldn't get the matching funds. So, oh, and here comes this next. Family court receives a dollar from the feds for every dollar collected in child support. Yep, bingo. Until I met with my first family law attorney and they told me that, look, in our state, you're probably not gonna get 50-50. One of you is gonna win and one of you is going to lose. So unless you want to be the one that loses, you better start digging up dirt to prove why you're the better parent. 
and that creates this adversarial relationship and that's why these court cases are drug out for six months eight months ten months a year that's why as we just heard people settle people aren't settling because they're glad that the arrangement they're settling because they ran out of money and they don't have an attorney to keep fighting for them can you imagine how different it would be if those parents would walk into an attorney and the first words out of that attorney's mouth are look in our state you're probably both going to get 50 50. so you might want to learn how to work together and how to co-parent for the betterment of your child that would be nice but i don't think that it's ever going to happen because there's just too much money into it. and this guy's making so many good points and the saddest part is men get shamed because you have a lot of lawyers like what the lead attorney said in his video that'll say look man you know i could take this case but all i'm gonna do is just take your money and you're gonna lose so you're better off just going to court and getting what you can get and sure enough these women go oh well you didn't fight hard enough or, oh you didn't if anyone wants to see i used to be a parole officer way back in the day i won't say where but i used to have to go to court to do to process some cases and stuff and you know, I used to walk by the family court on Tuesdays and you want to see some broken, depressed, oppressed men go to family court in your local county on a Tuesday and just sit for a couple hours and you're it's going to chill you to the bone. It's horrible. And it's what this guy's saying, but times a million. Let's get back into it. And now all that money, instead of going to the attorney's college fund can go to their own college fund for their own kids instead of having one parent ripped out of that child's life. And so to continue on a path and, and not in any way putting down the previous speakers, but to think that we're doing okay with our children across America and in the state of Pennsylvania, that people are settling and everything is fine, is almost like Mr. Magoo driving down the street thinking that everything's fine while everybody's running off the road behind him because he's cutting them off absolute facts so we're gonna end it here um but there's another interesting part that i want to show you real fast and that's the comments because anything that's like this if you actually read the comments section um it's real sad because a lot of people chime in with their stories so um look at this this guy robert s says that's exactly my situation my ex withheld visitation after we split starting may 2015 i got an attorney and filed for divorce and shared custody she broke almost every order by coaching the kids that hate and withdraw from me she got the kids to say they wouldn't go with with me on my time or for me to be allowed to take pics or get a hug or kiss from them funny part is that before our split i couldn't leave the house without a hug or kiss from my kids uh, I was also a stay-at-home parent for several years. After four years in court and being run out of money by my lawyer, I have literally no contact with my kids when my ex demands that I give over 25% of my pay and child support. Damn. Man, oh man, that's crazy. This guy says, that's exactly what happened to me. This guy, Ohio Bangle. That's exactly what happened to me. I ran out of money having to pay for not just my attorney, but also the opposing attorney. That means he had to pay for his ex's attorney too. That's crazy. And then this guy here says, uh, wait, ooh, this is a woman, Deborah Gustin. They go after fathers big time for child support, but when a father is raising the child alone, with no help from the mother, and she isn't forced to pay child support. Nothing happens to her. There's such a double standard there. This is not right. I've known and still known fathers raising the children on their own. They sure don't get the help that, that mothers get. And here we go. This guy here, Ernesto Nava Jr. said, I've spent three years and 90000 in legal fees to a family court system that only empowers mom's behavior. Women want equality while well, we can start in family court. The burden should be on the mother to prove to the court why the dad deserves less time with his child and why she deserves more. That way, the family court system is right. But now, the, perp the main purpose is to bankrupt the father and keep the money flowing through the court system. The child is not, she, the child is not in the family court's best interest. It's a shame, and the ones who lose are the kids. Mothers can't teach their children what fathers provide the same way around. The majority of marriages and relationships are broken, not because the man left, but because the woman leaves or files for a divorce. And this guy, Caleb Leverett, says, nailed it. The Title IV defunding is the most destructive force 
of families that almost no one knows about, much less understands. So I think we're going to close here. And it's just, it's just one of those things that kind of just flies under everyone's radar. I know that, you know, we've had, you know, quote unquote, men's rights activists and other people, people talking about this, but they people always go, oh, you're just complaining or, oh, you're just that. But this is not a joke. You know, there's a lot of people who are suffering from this. There's a lot of men who end up committing, you know, who, who delete themselves. There's a lot of, you know, women who go into relationships with men later on who were, they're trying to make a life with their new husband or whatever, or they have a brother who's dealing with this and their lives are messed up because of it. So, um, I hope everyone found this helpful. If you're going through anything like this, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks to all the new subscribers. You guys are the absolute best. Um, and everyone stay safe and I'm out of here.